Hesker and the Burgesses have been in contact and involved of the Super Gala Foundation for several years, but both were funded by ULIP Foundation. We are now thinking of a new venture, a joint venture to help the field as a whole to develop further. So we are delighted to have today as our graduation speaker, Dr. Heidi Burgess. Before I give the floor to her, I would like to remind myself and invite all of us to remind ourselves that we are not alone in this. Students came here with big dreams and challenging aspirations. Families and their children, spouses, their mothers, their fathers, their dear ones to a rigorous course of study. And I'm particularly grateful to my own family that share in the challenges of distance and separation. We could not be here if we were not, if we were not for all those who have been involved in this process. We want to recognize this contribution. This is why I would like to invite each of us to take a moment of thoughtful silence to remember all those who could not be here the one that contributed to these occasions, relatives that passed away, friends that supported us, others who have been special and that we want to thank deeply in our heart because we know that we would not be here today if it were not for their support. Let's be together for a moment with them, with all of them, and with all of us. It is now for me to introduce time to introduce our commencement speaker, Dr. Heidi Burgess the co-director of the Conflict Information Consortium at the University of Colorado, where she received her PhD in sociology. Since the inception of the Conflict Information Consortium in 88, I served as co-directors in charge of the administration, program development, consortium research, research support activities, the strengthening of the network with scholars and practitioners, and the application of rapidly advancing computer and telecommunication technology to peace and conflict resolution. The primary theoretical focus has been the development of strategies for dealing with intractable conflict. In recent years, new focus was given to the Peace Frontier Project, a collaborative initiative to develop a 20-year plan for addressing the truly difficult challenges facing the effort to promote more constructive conflict. In this horizon, the collaboration with ESCAR has emerged. We are delighted that both Heidi and Guy Burgess are now affiliated with ESCAR, and we look forward for long years of fruitful collaboration. Please welcome our commencement speaker, Dr. Heidi Burgess. Thank you very much, Dean Bartoli. I am really excited and honored to be invited here to talk to you. Uh, the last week we spent here has been extremely exciting. We've had a series of conversations with some of the faculty, some of the grad students, trying to forge a number of ways that our two universities are going to be able to collaborate and we've planted a number of seeds which are sprouting really fast. It's really exciting. I will talk more about that in a little bit, but I want to stop for a second and congratulate you. That's why we're here, is to celebrate your accomplishments. So I give you my applause, and I hope that you will congratulate yourselves. It's a long... It's a long road, whether you're getting a certificate, or a bachelor's or a master's or heaven knows the PhD is a very long road. I remember thinking I was never going to get there. But you did. 
congratulations for sticking with it. Perseverance, I think, is one of the skills that is very valuable in life. So you have all exhibited that, and it will give you a good experience for the future. Um, I was going to say in my talk something very similar to what Dean Bartoli said, which is that this is a commencement. And we tend to think of it as an end, but commencement doesn't mean end, it means beginning. You're beginning a new phase of your life, but I hope you will keep in mind that this is not the end of learning. It's a change in the way you'll be learning. But I hope you will continue to engage with SCAR, and I hope you will start to engage with the new entity that we're starting to build with SCAR, which we're tentatively calling the Conflict Research Collaborative. Uh, the focus of the collaborative is going to be working together to update and greatly expand beyond intractability, which I, uh, Andrea mentioned and I hope most of you students know. Um, a number of years ago, at the early stages of beyond intractability, Harold Yuri, who's one of the leaders in our field, said to us, it's a great knowledge base but you need to turn it into a place. And I scratched my head at the time, this was before social networking on Facebook and all that stuff, and I thought to myself, well, what could Bill mean? How could we turn it into a place? Well, now it's obvious how you turn it into a place, and that's what we're gonna be trying to do as we develop it with this car. We want this to be a place where you can come back to get information if you're faced with a conflict challenge in the future that you're not sure how to handle, or you don't remember a theory that you vaguely learned, but it's kind of escapes you. You can come back and find it on Beyond Distractability, I hope. I very much hope that as you go off in the world and start practicing or teaching, continuing to learn that you will share in all sorts of ways by writing for Beyond Intractability, by there's gonna be lots of opportunity for discussions, for blogging. We're gonna to try to come into the 20th century with the 21st century and really turn this into a place where all of you can stay in touch with each other and us at Colorado and other university centers around this country and other countries, we want to turn it into a really vibrant place that is organized around research and practice, trying to bring theory and practice together. So this is what we're doing together, and it's going to take you. Can't be just us. It needs to take everybody in the world. Uh, I'm particularly excited to be associated with this car because I've kind of felt like we're siblings. As Dr. Bartoli mentioned, we were we got our first Hewlett grant at the same time in 1988. That was our birthday. I gather that SCAR, which was then CCAR, had existed for about six or eight years before that. But we started together, and I saw ourselves as being fairly similar. And then, like siblings, we kind of grew like this. We went very different directions. But we're coming back together, and it's very special. Because I see SCAR as being the premier conflict resolution program anywhere in the United States, probably anywhere in the country. We have an undergraduate program at CU, we do not have a graduate program. So my undergrads say to me, I want to go to graduate school, where should I go? I always say, well, you ought to apply to George Mason, but they are pretty hard to get into. So you're the queen of the crop, and it's just really exciting for me to be associated with you in an official way. Um, we are developing with Beyond Intractability something that we call a CL3 system. We need a better name because everybody says, well, what's CL3? CL3 stands for Challenge-Oriented, Long-Term, Large-Scale Learning Community. Let me go through that piece by piece. 
challenge oriented. We see conflict as the fundamental challenge of our time. We looked with envy a few years ago when Al Gore and the intergovernmental, uh, I'm forgetting the word, uh, Consortium on Climate Change put forth Inconvenient Truth. And it took climate change from being this esoteric topic that only scientists were debating and made it something that everybody in the world was aware of. Enormous amounts of money are pouring into climate change research. Enormous amounts of policy are being debated about what to do about climate change. And nobody, it seemed to me, was paying that kind of attention to conflict. Now climate change has maybe receded a little bit in the collective consciousness. Now we're worried about economics here in the United States, in Europe, really around the world. Economics and budgets and taxes are on the forefront. We're not going to be able to solve climate change. We're not going to be able to solve anybody's economy. We're not going to be able to solve any other social problem that plagues this nation or the world unless we learn how to better deal with conflicts. I was struck, and I don't know if you noticed, uh, there's a fellow named Richard Murdoch who's running for the Senate from Indiana. Uh, let me read a couple of quotes that he has stated recently. One was, I'm just against compromise. We need to stop it. It's weak and it's foolish. And then he also said, to me, the, uh, the highlight of politics is to inflict, focus on that word, inflict my opinion on people who disagree with me. Oi. <laughs> we need to do something to change that philosophy of governance. We need to do something to help people communicate in more civil ways. We need to do something to get people to listen to people who disagree with them, not to inflict their views on somebody else. If we don't teach our leaders, if we don't teach the general public better ways of solving problems, better ways of interacting with each other, then we're not going to solve climate change we're not going to solve the economy, and our country and the rest of the world is really going to go down in tubes. My generation has made kind of a mess of things. I apologize for that, although that's pretty empty. I teach in my classes that apologies don't mean anything unless you start doing something different afterwards. Unfortunately, I'm not empowered to get Richard Murdoch or other folks to do something different afterwards. But I hope that you can go out and help change the tenor of discourse in this country and around the world and to teach better people better ways of engaging with conflict. Uh, this is an interesting field. It has a different, what I call, information profile from other fields. In this field, you get degrees and you go out and you mediate or you intervene in other ways, you facilitate dialogues or you teach. But we're not the only source of expertise. Everybody in the world knows about their own particular circumstances, their own conflict styles. There is a lot of expertise in the back of this room, not just in the front of this room and in the outside world that's not in this room at all. And we learn from that expertise. So the information structure of this field is what I call a many-to-many -many structure. We need to teach many people how to deal with conflict better, and we need to learn from many people how to deal with conflict better. And that's different from the sorts of fields like chemistry and physics and engineering where a few people are experts, they talk to other experts, and they don't engage really with the rest of the world. We do. 
And that's one of the things that I think is so unique about SCAR. And I'm particularly excited about the project that we're starting with the Center for Peacemaking Practice, where we're going to be interviewing practitioners. SCAR has gone further to bridge the gap between theory and practice than I think most other research universities have done. Most other research universities, even in this field, have their scholars over here, they have their practitioners over here, and somehow or other they never seem to get together. The Center for Peacemaking Practice is really trying to get them together. We're going to start a major interview program where we're going to be debriefing people who do practice, who tend, who aren't scholars, who tend not to write. There's lots of knowledge out there. And SCAR, I've just been really impressed this week talking to the grad students who are scholars and several of them that I've talked to have their own NGOs where they're also being practitioners. You guys know theory and practice already better than almost anybody else. And I'm hoping that you will continue to do that and help us to do it and pull everybody with us because if we don't bring together theory and practice, if we don't bring together sociology and economics and political science and anthropology and music and all the different disciplines, the thing that's unique about SCAR is all these different disciplines are here. And it puts us in a unique position to do more to solve these problems than a lot of people. So I wish you luck. And I ask you, please, to stay engaged, to work wherever you're working, to help people engage in conflict more constructively, even if you end up in a job that isn't directly a conflict job. Everybody has a role in helping this world engage in conflict more constructively so that we can get out of the myriad messes that we're in. Congratulations and good luck.